So we come six hours north to the home of Grand Fosch Books, where they make some of the best axes in the world. We're going to have a look at their production, how they make these axes. So I've been wanting to go to Grand Forge Books to see the productions for quite some years and it, <laughs> it's been a long time to get away from the farm and, and go quite so far north. And it's a really fascinating place. They've been producing uh, axes there for a very long time. It started originally as a scythe uh, workshop in the 1860s and then in the 1900s turned towards axe production and you know the basis of the forge that's there today was set up. They're using very old power hammers and it's a really interesting production cycle. The, the video quality hopefully will show you a good sense of, of what the production looks like today. The audio is a little bit poor because it's very loud inside obviously but I hope you get something out of seeing how they produce some of the best axes in the world. Okay, well, you're now you're ready.
So then once the rock grinding and the hardening speed happen there, the steel is annealed to take away some of the stresses of the forging and hardening process. In this case, the Grand Porsche, they heat the steel to 195 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes and heat the actual there to anneal it, uh, which tempers it. The hardness of the finished steel depends greatly on the carbon content of the steel, but also on the temperature of the annealing process. Once all that's done, they tumble the stone, uh, the axe head to the ceramic ball to take away any burrs before it goes to its final sharpening to make the finished product ready to be handled. So this machine is tumbling the finished blades with little ceramic balls after they've been annealed. And then this is where they get finely sharpened and handled. You can see some of the rims that are put on the handles of splitting axes, for example. And then these are truly sharpened up and polished, ready to go up to the handling station. It was really cool to see the productions and I really liked the, the forging process. It reminded me a bit of uh, eviscerating chickens, just these precise, intelligent movements with minimal movement between each move to create the perfect product. And it's the sort of job I would get really into, I think. It's really cool to, to sit and just watch the craftsmen working and just performing their, their thing. And you see all these rejects, like the, the quality of the finished product from Grand Forge Brooks is amazing and they reject anything that's subpar. I came away with this beautiful old uh, ax that's used for making log houses, essentially. Now these come uh, in a, a couple of different variations. This is quite flat uh, with a bevel on this side. You get them left and right handed as it were or double beveled into the middle so this is used to work alongside a log for flattening or planking for for flattening logs to make log cabins etc and you see it's got room here it's used with both hands to do fine work uh, to take down the edges of large pieces of timber and i wanted to to play around with doing some of that work because it's very traditional uh, mode of building here that was how our house was built also a uh, really nice quality axe we use their hatchets for kindling and things like that and i've used the splitting maul for splitting firewood now this is a really nice heavy maul it weighs over two kilos in the head i've had this for some years and what's nice about it is it's actually forged and tempered to withstand the impacts of hitting steel so you can actually use this splitting maul for driving in wedges for really big and twisted logs that you're trying to split it's important when you do that that you only use uh, a maul that's been specifically designed to hammer steel there's a lot of force when you uh, impact steel with steel and you need to wear goggles it can be a little dangerous and it's important you maintain a the sharpness of the head especially when you're splitting like gnarly wood and that you maintain the edge here it shouldn't mushroom out that can be quite dangerous for you so you should always file this surface down if it starts to mushroom out if you're hitting wedges a lot but this is the the larger maul that they do and it's i think if you're living with fire as a way of heating your home etc this is an essential tool i love it I also wanted to get their little hand adds and, and adds is like a tool you would use 
to dig out a, a canoe like working below your feet so an axe that's it's like a chisel axe essentially but they do a little hand version that's really nice for woodworking uh, it be used in boat building but it's also used in just carpentry around the farm uh, i also wanted to get their fro because i lost my fro during my packing to come to sweden many years ago a fro is just essentially a straight blade facing downwards with a handle that you use for splitting wood and you see from the array of tools they have on the wall there they make amazing quality tools and they obviously cost a bit of money so i decided to refrain and not <laughs> spend too much all at once but uh, it's really nice to see their productions and to have a sense of place with the the products that you see here in sweden i know that they ship all over the world and i can highly recommend them as you know if you want to invest in a tool for the rest of your life and a tool to give your kids i reckon these are some of the best ones out there so I hope you found that video enjoyable and interesting and click like and share and subscribe if you enjoy our videos in general. Today is the first live questions and answers on our online training. So if you're not involved with that, come and get involved. That's on the full subscription. We've got a whole bunch of people from all over the world on that. I'm excited to answer some of your questions direct and that will get saved and put into the course material. So looking forward to that. And you can find out a whole bunch more in our book or in the online training that's put out at a price point that everyone can afford to get involved. So I hope to see more of you in there and I'll see you in the next video.